Hello, this is Dr. Dennis Bielfeldt of the Christ School of Theology. We're dealing today with a series of lectures on the great German thinker Leibniz, who lived from 1646 until 1716. Uh, there are several challenges to understanding Leibniz. Uh, only about half of his philosophical work, for instance, has made it into the academic edition of his works. So they're working on that as we speak. It is difficult to date some of his material, uh, his letters. He never wrote a, a magnum opus, uh, so his work from occasional writings must be pieced together. Uh, Leibniz uh, also made demands on his readers. He had a very strong background in Aristotelianism, and Platonism, and Orthodox Christianity. He was trained in scholasticism and Renaissance humanism, and he knew well and deeply uh, the work of Descartes and Spinoza. And so, like I say, his uh, writings make demands on his readers from many uh, directions. Fundamentally, he's uh, now looking to respond to three threats, materialism, atheism, and necessitarianism. There, I even spelled it right. Materialism. Uh, now, Leibniz is going to deny uh, that the essence of body is extension. Okay, because if it were to be so, it makes body infinitely divisible, and thus there would be no simple unities that he believes must exist at the ontological ground floor. So we're going to see how this works, but he's uh, going to deny materialism. He said that if, the, if extension is the essence of body, and you, you should all remember that Descartes held this, uh, then there would be in nature no source uh, of activity, right? And thus bodily objects, uh, according to him, cannot be regarded as substances. And if this doesn't make too much sense at this point, we'll be talking about it more later. Uh, he believed over and against uh, uh, the threat of atheism, atheism that God is needed for a complete metaphysics. You cannot have a complete metaphysical schema uh, without God. And uh, if uh, Descartes uh, is right and all things are mechanical, or Hobbes uh, even, even tried to give a mechanical analysis of uh, mind, right? Uh, if they're right, then um, it's difficult to see how there's human freedom. Leibniz cannot countenance a metaphysics that does not allow for freedom. He claimed that a person acts freely when the contrary of that action is not contradictory. Now that's going to be interesting as we get into this. Uh, in mathematics, we oftentimes prove things by showing the negation or the denial of the things that we're proving is contradictory. If the denial is contradictory, then the thing must be in logic. Hold on to that thought. This is going to be the way he reasons about all kinds of things. So a person acts freely with when the denial of that action is not contradictory. Okay. When the contrary of that action is not contradictory. All right. Now, uh, fundamental principles. I am, um, I should tell you that uh, there's a very nice uh, article up uh, on the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy by a uh, philosopher by the name of Look, who uh, uh, actually does a pretty nice job in just uh, uh, understanding and uh, laying out Leibniz. And so I've kind of followed the way he does this, and he has uh, certain princ principles here uh, that he lays out um, in this. And he says that, of course, Leibniz holds to the principle of the best. I'll talk about that, the principle of the best. Um, principle of the best, okay? 
the predicate in notion principle. I'll explain that. But this is something that Kant has strongly uh, objected to. The principle of contradiction. The uh, principle of sufficient reason. If you ever see PSR, that just means principle of sufficient reason. Everybody knows that. And then, of course, very famously for uh, Leibniz, the principle of the identity of indiscernibles. Very, very, very important principle. And then the principle of continuity. So the principle of the best, the principle of the predicate and notion theory, the principle of contradiction, the principle of sufficient reason, the principle of the identity of indiscernibles, and the principle of uh, continuity. And uh, we need to now know a little bit about each. For instance, the principle of the best uh, is the assumption that God always acts for the best. Okay? It's not difficult. This follows from God being uh, the most perfect being. If God is the most perfect being, then God always acts for the best. It's almost a little bit like Anselm, isn't it, there? God, if God always acts for the best, then God must create the best world. Okay? Uh, the sufficient reason why God would choose this world is therefore that it is the best of all possible worlds. And if you've ever heard the expression, best of all possible worlds, you should thank Leibniz. And of course, very famously, uh, Voltaire, the French philosopher, and of course the French always like to uh, lampoon the German heavy-thinking philosophers. Of course, uh, Voltaire and Candide uh, certainly lampoons uh, uh, Leibniz here for this idea of the best of all possible worlds. I've always been very interested in the predicate and notion theory that he has. And uh, the predicate and notion theory is, I'm going to quote him now, is that in every, quote, true affirmative proposition, whether necessary or contingent, universal or particular, the notion of the predicate is in some way included in the notion uh, of the subject. Okay. The Latin, praedicatum in est subjectio. And then he says, otherwise I do not know what truth is. So uh, this is a very interesting principle. Now, we would oftentimes think this is so, uh, let's take the bachelor's and unmarried male. U.M. means unmarried male. So the predicate is, is an unmarried male, right? Bachelor is the subject. So the idea that is the subject, bachelor, there is the predicate, unmarried male. Now that makes sense from the standpoint of uh, semantics, right? The concept of unmarried male is included in the concept of bachelor. Notice it doesn't convert. The concept of bachelor uh, is not included in the concept of unmarried male, right? Because those aren't coextensive, because there's lots of unmarried males that aren't bachelors. Two-year-old kids are not married males, uh, and yet they're not bachelors. But what semantically is so, that the predicate is included in the subject, Leibniz wants to hold as a universal metaphysical principle, whether this is true by meaning, or by fact, or metaphysical fact. While Kant and other thinkers would appeal to the predicate being included in the notion of the subject in necessary propositions, Leibniz says that it is included in the subject in contingent propositions as well. And this is a very bold metaphysical statement. This notion does, however, seem to go back to Aristotle in the prior analytics. And I'll come right back here next time. 
hold on to this. You've got two of the principles of Leibniz that you can talk to your friends about, the principle of the best and the principle of the predicate being in the notion. And we'll come back and explore these others in a moment. I'm Dr. Dennis Bielfeld of the Christ School of Theology.